the job of the founder and the CEO is different every three to six months. It's, it's, it's pattern analysis. And, and the challenge is when I started my advertising business, I didn't really know what it was gonna look like. Like I, I knew what I wanted to do, I knew the business model, but I didn't actually know, um, I didn't know the challenges I was gonna face, right? Like, like I knew I'm gonna have to build a business and I, and I knew that I don't know how to sell very well and I had to learn how to sell. And I was like, okay, well, out of necessity, I'm gonna have to not invest a lot of money in hiring a salesperson. And it turned out to be one of the best decisions I made because I was able to scale my business without having salespeople on staff. Like we, to this day, don't employ salespeople. And, and that came out of necessity, the necessity of, I don't wanna blow all my money on one or two or five salespeople. And what I learned from that is that you really need an opportunity to learn the type of business you are. Like if I would have gone in my first year and, and hired a salesperson, yeah. I would have been selling something that I'm not even sure is the right thing to be sold. So, so a lot of the stuff that I'm talking about today is like, if you're not sure if you have time or money, spend time figuring out like, what are you? Like you might have a thesis about the type of business you are, but you need the business, you need the marketplace to tell you like, that's actually the type of business that I am. Okay, fair enough. Because I, when I started the business, I started a consulting firm. I started um, an influencer marketing business, a social media marketing business, and a food influencer business. And then the fifth one was kind of a combination of ad buying. Okay. So, so, the, so the business that became the thing is the ad buying business. And in retrospect, it's, a, it's, it's obvious because my entire career has been ad buying but for some reason, I can't. I went into the business. And I was like, "Oh, I'll do something else. Maybe I'm, you know, whatever." But, but like, if I'd have gone in going wholeheartedly on consulting, like that'd have been a waste of time and money. So once you know who you are, then you've got to know what the right message is to inspire and motivate into a sale. Okay. Right. Like so, even if I know the type of business I am, I don't know how to get people to buy from me. And. Yeah. And the marketplace tells you what you what they want from you. You have a thesis. Um, so all this rolls up into the the fundamental sort of the, the 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 common thread across all of this is really just trend analysis. Okay, and you're using the market as a. Um... You know, you're doing trial and error. You're using the market as your guide. That's so absolutely it. Okay, fair enough. Okay. And and that applies to every business. Like you yeah. you know, content from a from a value driven content marketing perspective, like we're doing that right now. Like we're entering a different we're we're in a different phase of our business now and we need to scale differently. And so in order to scale differently, like I now need to re figure out like who we are and how we scale yeah. differently past the boundaries of where we currently are. Like so just to be very clear, we're a $4 million business. How do we scale to a $10 million business? Okay, so there are different standards for yeah. different types of... Yeah, and by the, the other way, the other thing is n not just different standards, it's the job of the founder and the CEO is different every three to six months. Like okay. your job as you, so you want to create a, you're creating a consulting, coaching, business for for C, for founders and CEOs, right? Yeah. So your job as the founder and CEO will change every three to six months. Okay. So for me, it started out as the first two phases, what kind of business are we? And then how do we talk about our business? And then it came into, hey, we have clients, now I got a staff for our business. And yeah. then how do I find the right people to staff for our business? And then who are the right people? And then when do I hire more people? 
and do I keep growing or do I focus on process? And I need to focus on process because we have the business, but I don't do process very well because everything lives in my head. And by the way, I have bad emotional intelligence. So like I'm bad at managing people. I'm, I'm good at managing people, but I'm also, but, but there are challenges along the way that I needed to like get to. A lot of when I started the business, a lot of what I relied on is, is like, I've done this before, but there came a point in our business where we were doing things that I haven't done before. I'm a first time chief executive officer. Like okay. I'm learn like I'm sure people went to MBA, got their master's degree and learned some fundamentals. But the reality is I've, this is the first time I'm doing this in this unique combination. So the last thing is, you know, okay, I got to hire someone with high emotional intelligence. So to lead the team, to operate the business. Okay. That, had to figure had to figure out that I even needed that. And then I needed to figure out now I need to sell aggressively. And by the way, there are things that our team does good, but not exceptionally well. So I need to focus and train them on that stuff. So every few months, the job changes. And I think you'll find that with your business too. Like you're going to be defining your business model. You're going to be defining your best customers. You're going to defining the signals that you need to find your best customers. You're going to get your customers. And now you need to give them the thing that you sold them. And then you're going to realize you're not making enough money, but you got good at selling. So now you need to find hire other people to fulfill on the thing that you just sold. It, it's a, it's a continuous game of evolution. Exactly. Right. If you've never, if you've had a job like, like employees don't understand how incredibly beautiful it is to have someone else to blame. <laughs> it's just, it's just, That's a fair point. Yeah. it's like, I didn't, you didn't give me the tools I needed. You didn't give me the knowledge. You didn't give me the training. You didn't give me, you didn't pay me enough. Uh, you're not supporting us. Uh, the client is a, the client is this way or the, that way. Okay, cool. That's beautiful because you're an employee. You get to have those qualms. I, have to deal with all that. That's all my fault. Yeah. A hundred percent of the way. So you're, you're working in a, in an extremely unstructured environment mm. where the only per like the best advice I can give you is talk to people who have done the thing you want to do. Like my, I had this, I heard this really interesting talk from Ty Lopez and Ty Lopez yeah, had the rule of thirds, right? Did I talk about that? Yeah. Yeah. Do that, like talk to people who haven't, who have built the business you want to build and, and they'll give you the shortcuts so that you don't have to make the same mistakes they made. People, people want your, like, I think for you that the last third, the bottom third yeah. is probably an element of content marketing for you. How's that? Well, I just think you, you're going to have knowledge that you're going to, you're going to, you're going to give, you're going to sell to entrepreneurs. Yeah. So whet their appetite and give away a lot of that information because I think coaching the, the challenge with coaching is you're you're selling your knowledge and people might be hesitant to give away that knowledge for free. But what people often don't realize about coaching and mentorship is that it's the knowledge, but it's also the reinforcement of the same ideas multiple times. It's helping people with the mindset. Like yeah. you can, you can tell me what to do. Look, I know how to lose weight, but for the vast majority of my life, I struggled with losing weight. I knew what to do, exercise and eat better. But I didn't because I needed the help to get to that point where I can exercise and eat better and live my life and feel comfortable and have the energy I need to go about my day, right? That takes a lifetime to learn. So what you're solving for are people who may know the fundamentals, but they forget it and they need help with the mindset. They need help to, to, to actually do the thing that you told them they should be doing. Okay. That seems, I understand where you're going with that because you know, people's mindset, they change changes over time with uh, inertia in their lives. So they bring them back up to that speed. Yeah, I like I like that inertia, velocity, moving forward with velocity.
Mm. And then also the other thing is, you know, I would, you know, I've been like the best, the most interesting people I know are the ones who have either a deep expertise and knowledge on something that happens to be something I'm interested in learning about, but they're not arrogant. And that non-arrogance, but that great deal of confidence comes from like l learning, learning the, the humanity of our existence, learning how to be a great human being. And it's, it's ongoing training. Like I spent my time doing, working on the landmark forum, which is fascinating, which I'm sure you guys have there. Um, going to conferences, like I heard from Amy Cuddy, who is a speaker on presence and personal power. Like, like, like if you're going to like, I, I look at, I look at coaching and I'm, and I'm thinking like your, your job in some respects is to be on the cutting edge of knowledge of how to perform. And you get that knowledge from stimulation from other sources of knowledge. Yeah. And so like if I'm hiring you as a coach, I want you to do all the legwork for me to bring me all the best pieces of knowledge so that I don't have to do it. So I can I can just get the essence of it from you in the best possible, most efficient way. Like are you are you asking me how do you sell to a person who thinks they know it all? Well, yeah. I think I think to the second point, once you've once you're engaging with someone like that, I think, look, I think, I think you can give them the knowledge, but you can't force them to learn it. Like, okay, that's it. Like if, if, the, if, and, and I can speak for myself, like I, there's someone I hired who I know and trust and I've known him for 20 years and he's, he's a, he's a trusted person and I trust him and, and I take his advice, even though it's, Sometimes I fight him on it, but I'll, I'll, most of the time I just go with it because I trust him. So if I don't trust him, then I'm not going to do it. And yeah. as far as selling that person, I don't think you sell them. I think I think it's very, it's very. I think that's actually a greater. That's even a more a more compelling sales pitch. Like, look, I'm going to give you the knowledge that I think is relevant for you to make build a bigger business. But if you're not willing to do the things that are needed to make that, if you're not committing to that, then we, we shouldn't work together because just tell me telling you how to do it and it is not going to give you as much of a result as you actually doing the thing that we think is important.